Hi everyone, uh, with Kelvin here. So we just finished B weekly contest five. So let's discuss about the fourth question, parallel course. So this question given uh, n number of course level from one to n, and we are given relation like um, x relation x comma y means um, course x has to be studied before course y. Like we need to study um, algorithm before taking data structure course. So in one semester, you can study um, any number of course you want, but um, the, the prerequisite of that course need to be fulfilled in the semester before that. Like, um, yeah. So here, take a look on the example. So course number three depends on course number one and course number two, right? And course number one and course number two didn't Number two didn't depends on um, any courses. So our strategy to take the course is first semester we take course number one and two, and on the second semester we take course number three, right? And that's why the, the answer here is two. The first semester take one and two, and second semester takes um, course number three. And on the second example, it's a loop. So course number two depends on course number one one depends on three three depends on two so it's not possible for us to take the courses right because it depends on each other and whatever we start with there is always a prerequisite that we cannot fulfill so we return minus one in that case so how we're going to solve this problem is by basically deciding from all of our prerequisite how depth how deep is the tree and Along with that, we need to check the cyclic loop itself. So let me show you an example. So let's say uh, our course is without a loop. So let's say this is our course. Um, let's say this is course A. A depends on B, right? And depends on C. And C depends on D, E, and F, right? Okay, F, sorry. Yeah. And then if you see from this graph, um, when we try to solve the A, we actually find all of its prerequisite. So A needs B, and B, we can take it directly by one semester, right? So B cos is one, right? And then A to C, A, A needs C, and then uh, we don't know how much it will take for C because it still have prerequisite and C need F which is 1 Because F doesn't have any dependent anymore like the prerequisite and D we don't know so we keep going in for its previous It's prerequisite. So this is one right so D already explore all of its children um, the maximum children need is one like the maximum it's one semester like this course need to be taken in one semester. So D is like from the maximum of its child plus one. So D can be taken on second semester. And when we go to C, uh, we have course of D and F already known, uh, which D actually at least need to be taken on the second semester and F can be taken on the first semester. So C can be taken at the fastest after the largest number of both being taken. Like one and two, the maximum is two, so C can only be taken on the third semester. And when we, we, we already iterate through all of the prerequisite of A, one and three, so the maximum is three and A can be taken on the fourth semester. So we get A equals four at that time. Uh, yeah, A equals four, I mean. So let's take a look on another example. So let's say D pointing to F. Is it impacting anything? It's actually not because this is not a cyclic loop, right? So C depends on D, D depends on F and E, 1, 1, so maximum is 2, so we still can go back. Uh, 2, and then here we need 3, here 1 and 3, we need 3. So this is not a cyclic loop, right? Um, what it, it will be a cyclic loop if it's like um, pointing each other like this. Like for example, here let's say it have another node, another node, and another node, 
right so this thing will happen to be cyclic so how are we going to check a cyclic right so imagine we perform a dfs so we go deep inside right if we go deep like this it's n because here it have nothing again and it will go back but if you see here if we go through here right here it will form a loop right so yeah the, the key point to afford this um, cyclic loop is simply storing every reference of node you are currently visiting like this is one stack of dfs like so we keep storing it so once it's visiting back to the part of your dfs then it means there is a loop right so we avoid that by using um uh, we, we, we store every node we fit in our stack to a uh, set to verify so okay that's the explanation let's take a look on the code so um, in the code itself i create a class called nodes called node and then the list of the prerequisite and name it as previous and the file is simply the id of the course itself and then um, in the minimum semester um, we, i initialize the node right from course number zero to course number n minus one and then on the relations rela uh, relation of the course itself um, it means like it's actually saying like um, three depends on one right so here three depends on one yeah so here um, index number one which is the three the pre the prerequisite is the array number zero which is the one uh, i'm referring right so we look through all of the relation and create the this graph for all of its prerequisite of certain courses and then here we look through um, the dfs i'm talking about for all the codes and then we will get the answer of maximum semester and if maximum semester is max value so if i found a infinite loop like uh, the dfs contains um, cyclic then i return a max value instead and when i found a max value i return a minus one and otherwise i return the answer so let's take a look on the dfs itself so yeah let's ignore the dp part so here we look through all of its prerequisite node right so um, n is the node itself like what node we are currently trying to solve so we look through all of its prerequisite node right and every time we look through the prerequisite node we add it to the gray node so gray node actually means like the current stack of the dfs like uh, i store a c d e and these two node and then when we meet the same node again um we check it through the gray set like um the visited set like it's a set of visited which is a c d e uh those two node i didn't give a name and next time when we when we actually do the keep doing the dfs and we meet again like i made the o again right and it's here so it means the loop happened so that's what the gray for so as you can see here uh, if gray contains that node before we actually try to perform the DFS, dfs but it's already containing it it means there is a loop and i return the max value in that case and otherwise we keep um, using the dfs to goes in to those prerequisite node right and why it's a maximum because as i explained um, one and three we visit both of them so we we need the maximum number of semester from uh, all of its prerequisite and add one afterward so here's the add one right and here i check if it's not the max value it means no loop then we take the maximum semester plus one and the catch here for the dp the point is um, once we find the node a here with all of its prerequisite right and when we try to find the c we don't want to try to go deep again right like let, let's say we, we first time we, f we solve the a four right so we don't want the when we try to solve 
it, it already visit all, all of its prerequisite, right? So when we try to find the D, how many semester we need for D, we don't want it to be recalculated again, but we want to store these two to somewhere. Um, the reason why is it might th there might be why I need to look through all the prerequis all the course because there might be happening like we have another course. Uh, sorry, yeah, X and Y. There might be two different courses that the graph is not connected to each other. So that's why we need to look through all the node. Right. I mean, this two is in one test cases. Right. There might they, they might be not they, they might be not connected, like um, the courses relation. So, yeah. That's why I have a loop here. Not I. I'm not assuming all of them is connected, which is of course there they aren't. So yeah, and we get the maximum semester of one node, and then we store it, and when it have. That if that not already been solved before, then we return the number of semester needed for that node, right? It might be happen also in other direction. Like we already solved D, and then after that we try to solve A. So A visit until D. D don't go deep in again, but it return the number directly instead the number of required semester. So in that case, we can um, finish this visit by on like every node on the being visited once yeah so that's it about this problem and thank you for watching see you on the next weekly contest